so life is a choice and you don't get to choose what happens to you but somehow some way i was able to choose a path upward that was meaningful to me hi there i'm charlie your word your wordpress expert and online business manager and guys i have messed up my notes this morning so please please forgive me i help small businesses get their businesses online i help you harness the internet as a way of doing business and i help you do what you do best today i have a guest i have alan lazarus from next level university which is where i met him i am going to be full disclosure here alan is actually my coach i'm very very proud to say that i have a coach at the moment and um, i chose alan to be that coach i spent years looking for someone that i could resonate with and this was the man that i found now that's not why i have him on the on the show i actually booked him before i became a client but alan has got a wealth of knowledge around holistic business management and i'm not going to explain what i mean by that i hope that becomes obvious through this uh, interview but alan thanks so much for coming on today i really do appreciate it if Charlie. i could get you to oh go, go ahead. on go ahead. no go on you first. Uh, if you could spend just a few minutes telling us about yourself and why i've asked you to be on here <laughs> So I think that that's a good indicator of how excited I am to be on the show is I just jumped immediately right in the middle of your sentence. That was a powerful pause. I thought you were done. <laughs> All right. So uh, the, the joke that I that came to my head is first and foremost, I'm so honored uh, to be your business coach. And thank you for that very custom sort of personalized in, intro. I think that's very special right before we got and hit record, I was talking to you about, I think this might be the first time that I've been on the podcast of someone who's currently a client. So that's my, a first for me. This is a first for me. That's very cool. I'm pretty sure it is. I think I've been on a team member's podcast, but I don't think I've ever been on uh, a client's podcast, which uh, I mean, shame on my clients, right? I'm kidding. So <laughs> thank you no. for that. I really appreciate it. The joke that came to me was, I wonder if you'd still have me on after our first coaching session. No, I'm joking. So uh, a little bit about me. I'll try to provide as much context as I can. Again, it's not easy to condense 35 years into you know 10 minutes, probably even less than that, honestly. So I often joke, I say, I'm hoping to hit puberty at 36. If you're on video, I look 12, which really helps me in my business coaching career, let me tell you. No, but but in all seriousness, I have rewatched the movie of my own life. Two things. Number one, I am honored to be here. Seriously, I do not take it lightly to speak into the lives of other people. I don't care if it's two people listening or 20 or 2000 or 20,000. I started listening to podcasts nine years ago. And they did nothing short of absolutely transform the trajectory of my life. So one degree of change in trajectory can change your whole world 10, 5, uh, 15 years out. And so the fact that I have your ears right now, if you're watching or listening, it's an honor. Thank you for having me, Charlie. I really appreciate it. I also feel the responsibility to make sure I don't waste your time like I've done thus far. All right. So here we go. Uh, so when I was two years old, I was born into a lot of adversity. I did not understand this at the time. Nine years ago, when I started listening to podcasts, I thought these people had it all figured out. They sounded so eloquent. They sounded like they had the right narrative. They, they sounded like they understood their life. It sounded like they really had a lot figured out. And now I've become one of those people, uh, one of those people that you would call a bloke, a male person. You, you use the word bloke. I think that's an Australian thing. I don't hear bloke over here very much. Uh, but anyway, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bloke. And uh, so when I was two years old, again, I didn't understand this at the time. I My father passed away in a car accident. And his name was John McCorkle. My real last name is actually Lazarus. And from three to 14, I had a stepfather named Steve Lazarus. And I took his name when I was seven-ish. And the McCorkle family, my, my birth father's family, was a big Irish Catholic family. My grandmother, my mum, my birth father's mother, was from Ireland. And they had my 
birth father had five siblings. So six kids, Jim, Joe, John, Jean, Joan, Jeanette. It's all J, all six kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the J's. And when we were trying to be, quote unquote, the Lazaruses, we kind of didn't associate with the McCorkles anymore. And so I playfully refer to ages three to 14 as boats and BS. And I'm, I'm going to get to why this is relevant business-wise. My stepdad was the hunter fisher guy who who had a motorcycle, snowmobiles, uh, grew up on a lake. We had boats, ski trips. Uh, it was the early, you know, mid nineties, early two thousands when the dot com bubble. And he worked for a company called Agfa that did hospital computers. So we were, we did very well financially. But my mom and stepdad did not get along, and that's a very polite way to put it on a public medium. When I was fourteen years old, my stepfather leaves. And he gets the apartment building and the yacht. We get the house and the dog. And my mom, I go from Xbox, Dreamcast, upper middle class, can't wait to go to college, to I now get free lunch at school because our income is so low. I shop at Salvation Army. Uh, my mom trades in her BMW for a Honda Civic, like just very different. And again, we weren't going to starve by any means, but it was very different. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. Um, I end up eventually going to college and I was afraid I wouldn't be able to go to college because of the money thing. Uh, and so circle back to when I was 14, that was the hardest year of my life. Didn't understand this until my 30s. When I was 14, my stepdad leaves, takes 90% of the income with him and his entire extended family with him. I have not seen a single one of them since. I have not spoken to a single one of them since, except for my stepdad on Facebook Messenger. That same year, my sister moves out with her older boyfriend. She was three years older than me. That same year, my mom and my aunt Sandy, her sister, get in a fight, actually about my stepdad. And she, my aunt, ostracizes us from my mom's side of the family. Now, I didn't understand any of this till my 30s. I started doing some therapy, rewatching the movie of my own life and realizing like, I kind of lost three full families by the time I'm 14 years old. Yeah. Now, fortunately, the McCorkles took us back with open arms, but it was kind of like Ghost of Christmas Past because I looked just like my dad. So it, they looked at me very interestingly uh, during those years. Um, but they welcomed us back with open arms, and I've been kind of in contact with them ever since. But it was never the same as it could have or would have been. And so in a way, I suffered through a lot of loss for like the whole first 15 years of my life, like nothing but loss really, which again, didn't realize because I didn't know any different. It was the water I was swimming in, so to speak. So I did the only thing I knew how to do. And I now understand this, even though I didn't at the time is there's four trauma responses and we can get into these, but the trauma response that I fortunately chose unconsciously is work harder, aim higher, get smarter. And that's always been the only way I know how to handle pain. Just aim higher, work harder, get smarter. And that's what I did. And so I bootstrapped my way through high school. I got what's called the President's Award. It's actually behind me. It's signed by George W. Bush. I got straight A's through all of high school for all 16 report cards. I got 189 in honors English. And luckily it was weighted because it was an honors class. And then I never took honors English again. Uh, but it was the only B I ever got, like through all of high school. And luckily it was weighted, so I still got the award. But then I got into college. I got tons of financial aid and scholarships, fortunately. And I was the obnoxious guy at the award ceremony that never sat down. Just physics award, math award, physics award, math award, that kind of thing. And uh, I went to WPI. WPI is a technical college, one of the best undergraduate engineering schools in the world. But it was $50,000 a year. And so I went there, I got my computer engineering degree, and then I got my master's in business. And then I was off to the races, tech company, tech company, tech company, tech company. So iRobot, Sensata Technologies, Lens Americas, Tyco Safety Products, Simplex Grinnell, which I guess is kind of the same company, uh, eventually landed a company called Cognex. Now I'm in my early 20s. I paid off $84,000 worth of debt in a single year, college debt. I had $150,000 in an investment account. My rent is 500 bucks a month. I don't have a wife. I don't have kids. I don't have a mortgage. I live on a lake with my beautiful girlfriend, Courtney, but 
I'm making a ton of money. And I grew up through high school and college completely broke. So I was used to having low expenses. And so I just was like, okay, let's just get wealthy. And I, so I just invested all my money in a com uh, account, Vanguard account with tech companies and ETFs and that kind of thing. So anyways, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. This is when I get in my car accident. So this is when everything really pivoted for me. So when I was 26 years old, I was up in New Hampshire with my little cousin. Actually, the only cousin who ever came back from my mom's side, which was eight years later. And I was playing Call of Duty with my little cousin, Dan, second cousin, actually. And we were going to go to TGI Fridays. We weren't partying, weren't drinking, nothing crazy. And I looked down at the GPS. I look up, dark winter night in 2015, up in New Hampshire, the snowbanks, bad winter, were actually covering the yield sign. I was supposed to yield through my intersection. I didn't yield. I end up on the wrong side of the road. And I look up and I see in front of me what I thought was a Mack truck, biggest, brightest lights I'd ever seen right in front of my car. And so I, computer engineering brain was like, done. There's no, there's no way. There's no way we survive this. This is the end. Head on collision. Fortunately, two things saved my life. Number one, it wasn't a Mack truck. If it was, no question, I wouldn't be here. It was a lift kitted pickup truck. There's a lot of those up in New Hampshire. And secondly, thank you Volkswagen. I was driving a car that I bought in cash, five grand, because I wanted to just invest all my money. So I bought a 2004 Volkswagen Passat. And I smiled because this car saved my life. I used to call this car the tank. Yep. And so it was a German engineered steel trap of a car. Both airbags did deploy and I physically, we were okay. He hurt his knee on the airbag. I hurt my face in the airbag. Physically, we were okay. But remember, I've seen pictures of my dad's car. My dad died in a car accident when he was 28. I'm 26 at the time, questioning my existence. This was my Phoenix burn down, existential quarter life crisis. What was the point? What did it all mean? And so after that, I flipped the script. And the best way I can describe it now is something I call the three buckets of success, which prior to 26, and this is only clear in hindsight, I was in the first bucket, which is super successful, but really deeply unfulfilled. I was professionally developed and I was achievement oriented and I was improvement oriented, but I wasn't self-improvement oriented. I wasn't personal development. I wasn't personal growth oriented. I hadn't done the inner work. I had no therapist, nothing like that. Resume, cover letter, LinkedIn, da, 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 like all that was in spades, but I didn't have the inner work. Then I went to bucket two after the car accident and I went all the way past broke. I liquidated all my assets. I started my own company and I went into debt and I was super fulfilled. I was fit, healthy, aligned, fulfilled, inner work, personal development, personal growth, self-improvement for days, but I was not successful. And so being successful and unfulfilled really does suck. And it turns out being fulfilled and unsuccessful also sucks almost as much. And that's just my truth. I mean, honestly, I think I think a lot of people think life is supposed to be happy-go-lucky, and I, I just don't agree. Um, so both of those suck. And 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 the third bucket is the one I help people get into now. And I told you this would this would come full circle for the business owners out there listening, and or future business owners, and or early entrepreneurs, and or someone who has considered having a dream or goal. The third bucket is, hey, I'm fulfilled, I'm aligned, I love who I am, and I'm actually successful at it. That's the third bucket, which is successful and fulfilled. And if you can honestly sit there and say, I want my current life, I want my future to be a, an amplified version of my current life, then I think that you're in bucket three. And those are the people that I help just amplify everything they already are. And uh, so whether you're in bucket one, two, or three, I've been through all of them. And that's literally what I help people with. And that's what I'm helping you with in my coaching program as well, which is helping you move from bucket one to bucket two to bucket three and, and to amplify bucket three to be as successful and fulfilled as humanly possible. So long story, very long. I help people achieve their goals and dreams in alignment with who they really are. Meaningful progress toward meaningful goals for a meaningful purpose that's unique to them. And I help them be successful and fulfilled, uh, which is really quite an unsexy thing for most people. But it's, in my opinion, the most important thing. But hey, I'm biased. Well, it's one of the things that actually um, 
called to me. It was one of the things that resonated with me, which is why um, I came to you. Uh, and it's why I want to sort of circle on back. I said to, when I said during my int in intro, uh, Alan looks at business in a holistic point of view. And that's what I mean. It's not just there's business and you've got to go out and get sales and you've got to do all these things to have a successful business. It's about making yourself successful in yourself before or as you are growing your business. Because if you're out of alignment, if you're out of harmony, it's not going to be great for you. And this is a great conversation to have. Now, that is sort of a roller coaster of a, of a ride right there, Helen. Um, yeah, life, life was... Uh... I, I often joke with Emilia, my favorite part about my life now is that it's way more boring than it used to be. <laughs> I'm very grateful. I love boring. Boring is peaceful. Um, but I, it problems, also used to, be an, it, it used to be an S show. So I'm very grateful for the, the boring, peaceful, unsexy fundamentals I live in now. Yeah. Oh, it's like that Chinese proverb, isn't it? May you live in interesting times. No, I don't want to live in interesting times. <laughs> I had enough interesting times for 12 lifetimes, you know. So I'll never look back and say, you know, I wish I had had done more. If anything, it's like, whoa, I, I, I went off the rails too many times. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, look, I, there's a lot of things we can get into, and I'm sure there's going to be a few things that we will dig into. But one of the things that has really grabbed me and interests me in the way you talk, it's you don't play down the amount of work that needs to go in to be successful. Uh, and I know a lot of people, you know, they get onto podcasts and they listen to the podcast. And, and one of the things about listening to them is that you get that inspiration because you're listening to a successful person talk. But it also becomes slightly demotivational because you're looking at where you are at going, oh, my goodness, this is so hard and I'm never going to be as successful as them because we don't see the journey that they've taken. So let's talk about how much work goes into being successful or how many years or decades of work go into becoming an overnight success, essentially. Love it. Absolutely. So... The, the thing that I want to go to the root of, and whenever you ask a question, I'll eventually get to the answer. I think I think that actually answers the question. But first, I got to go to the, the, the bottom of the iceberg. The bottom of the iceberg of what you just mentioned is this, this idea of what is your philosophy of life? Meaning, do you, and, and I'll give you the two camps, and I think that optimal is probably somewhere in the middle. The camp one is the camp that I never was born into. Uh, camp one is you believe life is supposed to be pretty good. And every time it's not, you think something's wrong with you or something's wrong with the world. And this is all unconscious. This is not, no one's like actually thinking this, right? This is the thought records in the back of our subconscious and unconscious brain. I don't have that. I don't believe life is supposed to be good. My life sucked pretty horribly. And there was some good things in it but generally speaking, it was mostly adversity. So I don't have the whole, well, today is really hard. Okay. So for right now, I'll just give you an example. I'm sweating profusely because our HVAC went down and I, it's like 90 degrees in this office. Genuinely. I'm, I'm like sweating genuinely now, whatever. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm still grateful to be here and I'm going to push through it. And that's the way I live. I'm not going to like Oh, it's a little hot. So I don't think today's a good day for a podcast, right? I'm just going to power through. But that's the only way I survived growing up is, is just find a way to make it happen. And so camp number two is the camp that I was born into and and uh, uh, nurtured into. And, and camp two is life kind of sucks. It always has and it always will. But despite that, you can make it meaningful and you can make it great in spite of that inevitable truth. Like life is 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 suffering. It always has been and it always will be. It's actually less so now than ever, depending on what country you're born in and your circumstances. But but at the end of the day, it, suffering is is the baseline. And so if you wake up not suffering, then you are above ground and you are you are ready to to make a meaningful life. And and even if you wake up suffering, nothing's wrong with you. Nothing's wrong with the world. This is the this is the deal right? And so I think optimal is somewhere in between those. So for me, I've, I've been guilty of life is supposed to be suffering. So why not suffer more? And, and I overdo that and I burn to the ground. 
other people I think are think life isn't supposed to involve any suffering. So they can't, they can't do a hard workout for two hours at a time. They can't, they can't do a podcast when they're sweating and have pit stains. And so they're overly soft, but some people are overly hard and toxic, right? So I've tried really hard to be the guy who, who can do hard things and has grit and perseverance and, and tells it like it is, and is very, uses candor and honesty. Um, and yeah, I want to inspire and motivate, but the truth is most businesses fail. Statistically speaking, the chances of you failing are very high. The chances of you being a multi-billionaire are next to zero statistically. And, and it doesn't mean you can't do it or shouldn't try. It just, just don't expect it to be any level of easy on any level. Like think about it, right? I, I actually was on a podcast earlier today and I had this moment. It was, it was really interesting for me because this person is um, very pro autism and they, they have autism and his name's Jimmy. And I had an awesome time and I really enjoyed myself with Jimmy. We had a great conversation, but I had that moment of sadness of how dare I squander my gifts? Because in the past, prior to my car accident, I, I was brilliant. I had gifts other people do not have. And I, I drank too much and too often. I did drugs. And I wasn't a bad person. I, I always tried to help everyone to the expense of myself too much, to be honest with you. But but I'm mad at myself because truth be told, Jimmy isn't capable of what I'm capable of. And that makes me sad. And the other thing is Jimmy is doing more than most. And it's like, holy crap, I know people that were given gifts you do not have that, that aren't doing one-tenth of what you're doing. So go Jimmy, right? And And it inspired me. I was inspired, but I, but first it was sadness. Why do I get to be brilliant? Why do I get to be articulate? Why do I get to lead a 21 person team globally and, and have 1700 episodes and speak into the lives of people and be attractive and tall? And why do I get to be all this? And yes, yeah, some of it I've earned, of course, but I was born with a brain that was super powerful. So I didn't earn that. And so, so how dare I not change the world in a positive way with my gifts? And I would say the same to anyone out there listening. And so, so let's go to the business side. You want to start a business? It's going to blow. It's going to suck and it's going to be ridiculously hard. But despite that, it's going to be meaningful. You're not going to have a boss particularly. You're going to have freedom of your own time. And you'll, and by freedom of your own time means you have to do a ton of things you hate and don't want to do, but you at least get to choose when you do them and, and in what amount. Like no boss is telling me I have to be here right now, Charlie. And so you asked for candor and and you got it for sure. There is no overnight success in anything. Even, I mean, I was a broke high schooler and then I was a broke college kid. And I went from painting in Maine for $8 an hour US, literally, which with the cost of living in New England is no money when minimum wage was 12 or 13. And in within a three-year period, I was making almost $200,000 a year and I was a top 1% global earner. But the truth is that wasn't in three years. What about yeah. kindergarten and middle school and high school and then college and then my master's program? And the, and what about the 250 grand in debt? And again, it wasn't debt because I got financial aid, but the 84 grand of debt. So if you saw that corporate journey, you would have been like, whoa, I mean, how how blessed are you? I mean, no, I, you didn't see me broke in high school and in college trying to figure out how to make it work. And so the results you see on the surface, whether it be fitness or intimate relationships or wealth are always created if they're real, if they're real, because <laughs> if they're not real, then it's just smoke and mirrors. So there's a lot of that. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to rent this jet for a day and, you know, that kind of thing. But anyways, so on social media, you can you can do some serious movie magic, right? But if it's real success, the truth is that there's there's things beneath that iceberg holding those results up that no one sees. And tr truth be told, if you envy the results and you don't envy the process, you're in serious trouble because the process is what creates the results. And I think that a lot of us fall guilty of that. I certainly did um, when I was younger. And I, and I don't fall for that at all anymore. And I, and I really hope other people don't either, because it might be awesome to have a 21 person team and to be coming up on a half million and, and to, to be heard in 170 countries and to have 26 clients, including you, Charlie.
But the truth is, all of that was was built with blood, sweat, and tears. And and I've I've lost more clients than I have right now. I've lost a hundred clients on the way to having twenty six of them. So um, if I had a nickel for every time I was rejected, I would have no money problems. <laughs> So let, let's um let's just talk a little bit about some of, some of that then. Um, I, I I love the 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 way you've built that up. It's it, it is an iceberg, and um for anyone who knows the iceberg analogy, I know Alan, you've got a, a, a different version of it, which is great as well. But the general iceberg analogy is the the top ten percent that you see, the bit that you see sticking outside of the water, up out of the water is nothing compared to what is under the water supporting it and what has gone into building it. And that that's what your business is like. That's what building your business is like. Um, you know, Alan, you talk about your gifts and that's fantastic. Yes, you, you are gifted, um, but you've made something of that. You, 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 you took your brain and you used it. A number of people would have gone, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and slid on through life there would still be people who are earning the big dollars now being personally unfulfilled but incredibly wealthy uh, and they'll get to the end of their life and go well what have i done with it what wh where have i been what have i done that they're not happy so you've got a real balance there um now so i lost my train of thought because you had a couple of points <laughs> Uh, no one, of the other things I wanted to, one of the other things I wanted to actually call out there was I, I noticed that you're very honest. Um, you were talking about $200,000 in debt and then you corrected yourself and said, well, I got financial aid, so I only paid back $84,000. What, what drives that honesty? Because that's another thing that I really appreciate in people is the, the, the sheer honesty, even if it, it hurts to get it. You know what drives that? And I'm so grateful. There's no better compliment that I can get than that. I really seriously mean that. Like, if you were to ask, I don't know, a, a, a podcast listener of mine, what you think of Alan, and, and they were to say really good things or really bad things. To me, that's not the opinion that, that matters most. Although it does matter. The opinion that matters most is Emilia. She lives with me. The opinion that matters most is Kevin. He, he's my business partner. Like he knows me at the deepest levels. He knows me behind the scenes when no one's watching. I mean, technically he doesn't because when no one's watching, only I know that, but you know what I'm saying? And so the honesty was driven from pain, Charlie, because I grew up in an environment that I now playfully refer to. I used to be too much of a coward to share any of this on any public medium. I just can't not say it anymore. Like I grew up on what I playfully refer to as the boulevard of broken dreams. I looked around and I saw miserable human beings. This is just my truth. I saw miserable human beings who hate their job, who couldn't wait to party every weekend, who were unfulfilled as hell in their marriages. I mean, I thought marriage was awful. Like I was so scared of marriage. Now I'm excited. I can't wait. Like, but back then I remember thinking like, that sounds terrible. It looks awful. You guys don't even like each other. Never mind love each other, right? And so again, there were bright spots in my childhood. I, I got to give that too. I want to give both sides of the coin here. But more of it was negative than positive by a pretty significant margin. And I just observed. I was a scientist ever since I was a kid. I, 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 I had a hypothesis. I, I observed and I took in data and I tried to understand. So the honesty, the radical candor, candor is one of my top core values. And it's, it, it is, it's radical. It's, it's very direct. It's very uh, not emotional. It's very objective. And the radical candor came from pain. And, and by pain, what I mean is most, a lot of the people I grew up with were f full of it. And I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on your show. So I would say full of S. I'm, a, I'm an Australian. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, mo a lot of the people I grew up with are full of shit. And, and the truth is they don't walk their talk. They talk a big game and behind the scenes, they are not keeping the, the leadership by example principle. They're just not. And go figure. I had tons of heroes. I was looking for male role models. And I was so disappointed. As I've become older and older and older, I've been more disappointed, not more pumped. 
Like, it's been like, oh my God, are you kidding me? I can't believe I even looked up to you. And there's a few exceptions, okay? There's a few exceptions. I don't want anyone taking this out of context of you hated all of us. No, I didn't hate anyone. I'm just saying like some of you are full of it, right? And so at the end of the day, that's, I didn't want to be a hypocrite. And the truth is before 26, I was also full of it to an extent that I'm ashamed of. Now, I, I wasn't full of it to the extent that where I grew up, but I would embellish. I would, I would say truths that are that are amplified i would spin it to make it look better than it really was and i just don't do that anymore and, and the truth underneath that is i think that's a bad habit i think it's deeply unfulfilling because you know you're a hypocrite if you're doing any of that just like i did um, i'll give you one example so i when i was in my teens i stole from target and i tell this story because i need it known that i just wasn't perfect and I had an ego and I was figuring it out. And so I used to playfully joke. It turns out if you put them in your pocket and walk out, they're free. That is okay. Yeah. You can get free sunglasses. Congratulations. You arrogant loser. Honestly, that's me talking to me by the way. Um, but the truth is you can't hold your head high when you do stuff like that. You can't. You can't hold your your head high when you're not virtuous. And it, maybe other people can. I can't. I think, I believe ego is the delta between who you want others. This is what I believe. There's, there's imagine a target. Speaking of target, <laughs> imagine three circles. Imagine a target. The, the farthest circle on the outer rim is, I have to always close my eyes when I do this. <laughs> the farthest circle on the outer rim is who you want other people to believe you are. Then the next layer in is who you want to believe you are. And then the center circle is who you really are. I My goal in life is to make all three of those circles the same. That's my actual aim. And that's why I couldn't say 250. I had to go, wait a minute. No, no, no. I got financial aid and scholarships. It was only 84. That's why I can't say 200 grand a year because it wasn't. It was like 180. And also that was because of a referral program. It wasn't just the salary and the commission. And so at the end of the day, the, the beneath the iceberg is what people lie about. I saw results on the surface and I saw people lying about how they got them. And I can't be a part of that. And I, I am ashamed that I ever was. And so that's never happening again. So I think tr being truthful with others, being truthful with yourself and being walking your talk, I think is where fulfillment really starts to germinate and starts to, to happen. Because I do believe that you will be fulfilled to the extent that you are in alignment with your own actual truth. If you are overweight, you have to say it. If you're not, then you have to say it and own it. If you're in shape, you have to own that too. If you are broke, you have to accept it. Say, okay, I'm broke. I'm struggle bus. I'm, I, I screwed up. You have to own it. And then you can start working on it. It's ironic. The people who think they're great are not. And the people who think they suck are like awesome. And I, and I started to learn this through coaching. It's unbelievable. And, and half my clients, including you, Charlie, I just have to say, listen, you're actually better than you think you are. Because the people who are worse than they think they are have these huge egos. And usually it's a compensation for insecurity, just like me prior to my car accident. So it was the car accident that got me all the truth all at once. And now I seek the truth and the feedback on the day to day so that I don't have another existential crisis. Okay, so I just want to dig in a little further on that one because uh, I can see a lot of people going, okay, so we need to be really honest and they go out and they're brutally honest with everyone around them. Are you talking about giving others their truth or giving look, being truthful with yourself and being absolutely honest with yourself? You're <laughs> laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't do that. I uh, That is not what I'm recommending. I would say we have this my beautiful girlfriend, Amelia, she created something called the truth dial and it's the best concept ever. And the way that I see it is 
you will shine in your unique greatness to the extent that you dial up your truth dial. It's kind of like a dimmer. You, you know, imagine a light on a dimmer. You got you have those obviously in Australia. It's like, what? of course you do. All right, so you dial up to 10 and right. you get brighter and brighter and brighter. What did you say? We have roads, yeah. Say that one more time. We even have paved roads. I know, you know I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's not what I, I didn't mean it like that. I just need to make sure my metaphors land, <laughs> you know? Okay, so you dial up your truth and then you shine brighter. Now, here's the problem. When you dial up your truth, sometimes you become a spotlight shining down on other people's insecurities. And so if I, and I do this all the time and I struggle with this a lot because I'll say things like, well, I'm really out of shape. And people go in their minds and they go and they it's called personalization in psychology and if you're not emotionally intelligent you just personalize everything it's i was i did a lot of that as a kid too but essentially you go wait if he thinks he's out of shape then he thinks i'm out of shape too no no no, no, no. it's all based on my standards yeah. right i'm out of shape compared to what i used to be and it, you didn't see me before right like i know i'm in shape statistically so you have to transcode your truth in the context of the other person and you can't project your standards onto everybody else. So I can sit there and say, I'm not hardworking enough. And that is my truth. And other people are like, what do you mean? You're the most hardworking person ever. It's like, listen, for my goals and dreams, you don't understand. This is not going to cut it. But yeah, compared to your standards, you, you, I am really hardworking. I understand that. And so my goal is not to project my truth onto other people. My goal is to express my truth in a way that is contextualized based on who I'm talking to, which is why I asked you who your listener is, knowing full well that I might be villainized for it. And my screensaver keeps going off. I'm going to need to throw this computer through the through the window. <laughs> I'm joking. I, I turned off the screensaver, Charlie, and it still is going. I do not understand. Help. Anyways, I'm kidding. I still see you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it keeps going off. Have you noticed I keep going over here? Uh, but, but yeah, so do not go and tell everyone your full whole truth because it's not your place. And you got to remember that the feedback that you can give someone is in direct proportion to the relationship you've built with them. So I can give Emilia level 10 feedback because I have a level 10 relationship with her and because she is level 10 emotionally intelligent. So I grew up with a lot of emotionally immature people. Used to be too scared to say it, but holy crap, is that true? So I always had to dance around everyone's insecurities. I'm a computer engineer. So my brain thinks in numbers. Like, I'm successful. No, you're not. Not statistically, right? So everyone lies to themselves and lies to each other. And, and it's just all delusion and distortion. And if you're emotionally immature, you basically puff up in the opposite proportion of your insecurity. And I grew up around a lot of insecure people. So I was Mr. Truth Man who learned very quickly to exile that part of myself and just don't, like my computer engineer wasn't welcome because it, it, someone's, oh, I'm really smart. It's like, well, not really. No, not. I'm not trying to be mean. No, you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can't say that. So at the end of the day, now I try to contextualize everything. And so you are responsible for yourself. Be honest with yourself. Try to be honest with others without being um, unkind. Do it with, I, I, I'd, I'd say do it with grace. Mm -hmm. um, or compassion. That's a good word. Do it with compassion. compassion. Yeah, yeah. So, it, guys, honestly, it's about being honest with yourself. It's about looking at your situation. And, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to suck. Trust me. <laughs> it, it will suck when you sit down and go through it and say yeah if i'm honest with myself this is where it is um you then then have to uh and i use the term grace just there give yourself a little bit of grace in terms of how hard you are on yourself about all of that and that comes into why you should have a coach and why you should be listening to podcasts and why you should be doing all of the self-work that goes along with it because Understanding where you're at is one thing. Knowing how to get from there to where you want to be is an absolute other thing. Um, now, I am just watching the time, Alan, and one of the things I wanted to hit into, you mentioned you'd lost more clients than you have now. 
<laughs> I and, and I, I don't know whether that's a negative thing for you or a positive thing for you. For me, I don't see that as a negative. I actually see that as a positive because you evolve your client base. This is my personal view. You evolve mm -hmm. your client base to better suit your business as as you understand your business and as your business grows how do you feel about the fact that you've lost more clients than you've got now and what wh wh why did you mention it and what does it mean to you oh, i appreciate the question this this is great so kevin and i so kevin's a podcast coach i'm a business coach and we've both been on our own coaching journey we started coaching for free seven years ago and we're very grateful now to have pretty large rosters i think he coaches like we produce 35 podcasts, including three of my own. And then actually, I think it's more than that now. I think it's 35 recurring, but I think it's like 45 if you include consulting and all that. Anyways, and then I have a roster of business coaching clients. You're one of them. And there's 26. Youngest is 16. Oldest is 63. It's just awesome all over the world. Now, the reason, the way that I contextualize this is I talk to Kev because him and I are bothered by two different things. And we're insecure about two different things. And that's where I've learned most of my stuff is I've learned what something will happen in our business and he'll be upset and I won't. And then the opposite is true other times. So when we lose a team member, I'm like devastated. And that's probably an exaggeration, but it's it's really been hard for me when I see a team member who I had, I saw potential in who like stabs and then runs away. And the analogy I say is I never let the Trojan horse back in the castle. But at the end of the day, what we've come to understand is that when someone attacks my character, it affects me a lot. When someone attacks Kevin's competence, it affects him a lot. So there's someone on YouTube recently who <laughs> made a comment and said that all of these awards behind me are fake. So if you're on video, you'll see them. Um, and they said something like that. It got him more upset than me. It was on a teaser clip. It wasn't even, it was, he wasn't even in the shot, <laughs> right? And he's all upset about it. He's like, dude, they're, they're, they're hating on NLU. It's like, brother, they're, they're not fake. And I know they're not fake. I don't care. But when, when a team member attacks his character, he's like, oh, I know they're wrong. So what I came to understand, and I'm getting to your question eventually here, what I came to understand is that unconsciously I've been conditioned to believe that I'm not a good person. Because when you make everyone insecure, they usually lash out for what seems like no reason. And I happen to make a lot of people very insecure, especially when I was young and I didn't uh, dial down my truth. So so I he, he asked me one time, do you feel like any part of them is right when they attack your integrity? And I said, honestly, intellectually, definitely not. Emotionally, yeah. Yeah. And so if you attack my character, that's what really hurts my heart. Not anymore. Not as much as it used to now that I'm aware of it. It still hurts, but now I'm like, oh, I see what's going on here. Got it. But if you attack my competence, if you're like, oh, you're a terrible speaker. No, I'm not. What are you talking about? Compared to who, right? But if you say that to Kev, ugh, oh my God, I'm the worst, right? So so we we have two sort of exiles and, and it's the parts of us that, that we're deeply insecure about. And for me, it's unlovable. For him, it's not enough. And so he has this quote, he says, you're either afraid that all of you is not enough. And if, if that's not true, you won't be loved or you won't be successful. Or you're afraid that all of you is too much. That's me. And if you're too much, you're not going to be loved. All of us are one or the other or a combination of both. And most of us fall on one end or the other. So the people who feel not enough usually get very triggered by me. The people who feel unlovable usually resonate with me a lot. And then some people are both. But anyways, so to answer your original question, I've lost a lot of clients. I consider that a good thing and par for the course. At the end of the day, if you take more shots, you're going to miss more shots. I, I always say this, and I know why it never lands. I say no one will ever outfail me. And what I mean by that is I'm just going to fail forever. I mean, this podcast wasn't perfect. I got my screensaver going up. It's 90 degrees in here. I'm sweating like crazy. I've got pit stains up the wazoo. I don't really care about that. I I. I'm going to just keep failing forever until I succeed. And, and, but that's also not normal. That's a, that's Kevin is not that way at all. Kevin wants this to go perfectly and he prepares way more than I do because of it. So, so there's a strength and a weakness with both. So I've lost a lot of clients, but I think of it and I explain this to him because he was having a really hard time. 
uh, because he has lost clients. And I said, brother, you have podcast clients. Look at the stats. 80% of podcasters don't even make it past 21 episodes. You've not even, you've done way better than 80%, right? That means if you lose eight out of 10 clients, you're actually winning and you've done way better than that. I mean, our attrition rate is probably like 15%, something crazy. It's unbelievable. But when he loses a client, it messes his whole day up. With me, I just go, okay, um, how can I improve? You know, I, I try to ask for feedback. And then I say, okay, I have to grow and evolve and I, and I move forward. And, and I know that maybe, maybe it's not the right time. Maybe it's the money. Maybe it's me. Maybe I was too much. Maybe I was too little. I don't know. But at the end of the day, I think when it comes to the success side of like achievement, I'm not super concerned about big failures. When it comes to my personal life and my intimate relationship and my relationships in my personal life, like friends and family, I mean, it's a whole nother ball game. I, I, felt for the longest time like that was impossible for me. And so for your listeners, if you're going to start a business, business is about two things. It's about achievement and it's about relationships and they're connected. And most people I've studied, most people I've coached are either good at one or the other. Two guesses which one I'm good at, right? Mm -hmm. The point is you're going to have to be good at both. And if you're not you're in serious trouble as a business owner and you're going to have to find a business partner who's good at the other or or you're going to have to understand that it's going to be a struggle bus on one end of it because business is about achievement and competence and hard skills and it's about empathy, vulnerability, relationship building, trust, branding, relationships, book of business and you need to be good at both. I was garbage at the second one but I was success for days. I was like, okay, we'll go on to the next client. Kevin retains clients way better than I do. Although I'm getting better now that I'm learning how to actually coexist with non-computer engineers. <laughs> Look, if I can just, I just want to do a call out for my community based on what you just said and come and join me at askcharlieletham.locals.com. That is a place where you can get that kind of support that Alan was talking about. Oh dear. I just noticed. I am so sorry. I just noticed I I glitched, and that would be because my satellite dish decided it was going to move right at that moment. <laughs> so I I just want to invite you guys along to my locals community. Ask Charlie Latham locals .com. If you are looking for a place where you can bounce ideas off of, if you are looking for places where you can get inspiration or just vent something out and see who can come back and give you some feedback that's the place to be that's where that's what i'm trying to create for my my clients and my my community now alan there's a couple of things that you guys do that help out with all of this as well um i, I just wanted to finalize the bit about losing clients uh to to people who are listening i have a slightly more philosophical view on it and some of it it's about there are different ways of doing business. There are different ways of doing things. You've got different personalities and not all personalities mesh. And sometimes mm -hmm. you're going to get a client that just isn't the right client for you. It's not about you and it's not about them. It's about how it's come together for you. And sometimes you are better off saying to them, look, I'm sorry, this isn't working. I'm not going to say use these words, but this isn't working. This is not a, a good fit for you it's not a good fit for me you really need to find someone else who can who can help you because i'm not the person that can do that and that's if good for not, yourself I'm, go on i'm sorry charlie it's so good for your self-worth to your point i'm so sorry to interrupt you i think we've got a little lag going but if it's not a win-win a win-win it's a lose that's that's something that i've really started to adopt if it's not a win-win it's a lose because it's not sustainable if it's not a win-win. You don't want to work with someone who doesn't want to work with you. And you don't want to try to overcompensate to try to get clients that aren't thrilled. But you also can't presuppose it has nothing to do with you because you have to make your product and service better over time, right? So it's that duality that we have to hold. So I'm sorry to interrupt you, Charlie. Continue. No, 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 no. That's exactly the kind of feedback that I love to get from people. And that's why I have you on. This isn't about me talking. It's about listening to you guys and 
thank you guys sharing but that's exactly what i wanted to say it's it, it's it's really important to your own self-worth that you can get yourself to a point that you can actually say this this isn't about me this isn't about what i'm doing what i'm what i'm providing to this client is actually really good it's just not the right client for me and if you are a client of someone and you're not happy with them move on don't yeah just just go because it's going to be better in the long run honestly trust me i've been there i've done it i've done this for 17 years i've been in business for 30 odd years i it it's the way it works. Okay, now people can find you guys on a number of places. Now you've got some group coaching coming up, don't you? Do you want to talk a little mm -hmm. bit about your group coaching? Because I think um, people will benefit from that immensely. I know I have. I appreciate that, Charlie. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. It's been an honor. Thank you for having me. If you're on video, you can see that it looks like I just went swimming. I am sweating. I got to get my HVAC working again. But I don't know anything about HVAC, but I can solve your business problems, right? So anyways, the group coaching program, there's an origin story about the group coaching program that I adore. We have a man on our team named Brandon. Brandon is the man. He's been with us for five years and he used to be a high school football rock star and his dream was to one day be in the NFL, but he's only five foot four, I think. So he, there's not a lot of people in the NFL that are small like him. So talk about the little engine that could. He had this dream of getting into the NFL, but he didn't get into the NFL, but he looked up the statistics. He said, what percentage of high school football players end up playing college football? And then what percentage of college football players end up playing in the NFL? And, and they're very sad statistics um, for someone who is five foot four. And he said, I'm still going to go for it. So kudos to him. I asked him on a coaching call once because I coached the NLU team. And I said, brother, when were you the most on point? When were you the most dialed in? When were you on fire? And he said, dude, it was right at the tail end of high school when my grandfather had said something about, you'll never play in college, you're too small. And we went through that time in his life when he was on fire, dialed in, and we we broke it down. Boom, 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 boom. We had this whole whiteboard, Zoom whiteboard of session of like Brandon in the center and all the circles. You had a defensive coach. You had an offensive coach. You had a head coach. You had your dad there for you. You had, you know, friends that you were around that also set high standards. You had goals that were measurable and achievable and specific, right? You had practice every week for big games every week. You You had all these different things in place. So the, the truth is, is Brandon just an, a naturally motivated, disciplined human who just crushes it at everything? No. He was put into an environment that is set up to help people like him succeed. And by people like him, I mean humility, who have humility and work ethic. If you have humility and work ethic, we have designed the group coaching program around that same principle. It's you and nine other like-minded individuals getting after it together for 90 days. Kevin, myself, and Amy are, Amy's the assistant coach, and Kevin and I are the head coach. Well, I guess I'm the head coach, he's the co-head coach, and then Amy's the assistant coach. And we have a private WhatsApp group. It's like a digital football team or soccer team or field hockey team, whatever whatever you do, um, where it, it, it is designed to help you ignite your life in a way that you can't do alone. Some people are heart driven and they will do more for others than they will for themselves. And this is designed for people like that. People with humility who are heart driven and who need accountability. So group coaching is starting. Holy crap. I should know this. I think it's Tuesday, July 9th. We yeah. do bi-weekly sessions with Kevin and I, and it's all stuff like this, but deeper with a presentation. And then Amy does connection calls every other week and charlie you've been a part of group 14 and yep. so we've done 14 groups in a row 14 quarters in a row we do it every quarter 90 days achieve more in 90 days as a team than you ever have before it's the mario kart booster that's going to shoot you towards your dreams and it's designed in a way where it lasts beyond the 90 days or at least it's supposed to and we track habits and we hold each other accountable and we learn about fulfillment and success and peak performance and relationships and money and so uh it's really awesome and uh, thank you. Yeah, no, and I, look, I 
honestly recommend if you are looking for something just to get, give yourself a boost and you don't want to go and invest in full-time coaching or full coaching uh you just don't know if this is right for you i i i wanted to do it i had yeah honestly i looked at the money and went ah and then i got a very kind offer <laughs> thank you alan <laughs> you're um, welcome you're welcome and i'm really just so glad that i have done it because it's changed my outlook um i'm more like the woman i was before 2015 uh, before 2007 even <laughs> um certainly before 2015 I'm, I'm more like that woman that i was i i'm more like the person that i wanted to be and want to be and i i, I kind of like myself starting to like myself again which is nice. really really cool um charlie that's awesome holy crap that's that's a hell of a testimonial and i don't mean testimonial in terms of sales i mean that's awesome thank you oh, for thank sharing you. that no, i really appreciate it, it it's been it's it's been life-changing. I've had a couple of life-changing um, experiences in the last two years, and this is one of them. Nice. So do go along and have a look. Uh, Next Level University, uh, universe.com, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. Next you, Level it, The website is, is back up and running, thanks to you, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I'll put some, I'll put some details in the uh, show notes. You can connect with Alan on LinkedIn. Uh, Instagram, um, Facebook, LinkedIn. You also can email me a l a n at nextleveluniverse.com, spelled just like it sounds. Please just provide context because, like all of us, I get a lot of spam. Yes. Uh, do do subscribe to the pod podcast, the Next Level University podcast. It's um, I listen to that twice a day. Believe it or not, I listen to it when it first drops in the evening. And then in the morning when I wake up, that's how I start my morning. So it gives me the boost to do what I need to do in the day. Um, Alan, before we finish up, because I am very, very conscious of your time because I know you're a busy person. What is the one thing you'd like our listeners to take away today? Uh, everything in life is a choice. And... Bad things happen to everyone, but but the frequency, intensity, density, and duration of those bad things change. And as someone who has statistically been on the end of more adversity than most, um, and I've gotten actually proof of that, if you, you can go online and take something called an ACE score, which is adverse childhood experiences, and you can see where you fall on the bell curve of adversity. Um, and I, I always knew on the soul level that I was on the very high end, but it wasn't until my thirties that I asked my therapist, uh, once she got to know me, you know, have you ever seen this amount of trauma? Uh, and she said, due to the chronic nature of it, Alan, I, I know this is the high, you know, this is the highest I've ever witnessed. And I know what that means. Cause she's been a clinician for 10 years. Um, actually probably 20 years. So I, I bawled my eyes out and I, and I went and I, I was so sad for me, but I also was so like proud of me uh, because somehow I made it through all of that. And so, so life is a choice and you don't get to choose what happens to you. I, I would never have chosen to have my father die. I would never have chosen to have my stepfather leave. I would never have chosen to have lost three families by the time I was 14. But somehow, some way, I was able to choose a path upward that was meaningful to me and don't get me wrong i i drank too much and i did drugs and I, I i tried to escape too because pain is pain um but i eventually found my way out of the depths of all that and i know that you can too and it doesn't mean you're going to be a billionaire it doesn't mean you're going to change the world it doesn't mean you're going to have a yacht i mean maybe you will i don't know but but i'll tell you what you can definitely do better than you're doing right now and so can i and, and that comes from taking responsibility and making a fucking choice and, and you can do it. So, um, you're, you'll be glad that you did and pardon my French, but I, I get fired up about that. Uh, look, thank you. It, and that's just really, really powerful words to, to finish up on today. Thank you so much for coming on and for sharing so openly and honestly. Um, I've had a ball. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I definitely have, Charlie. You have got some consistency going on. I've, I saw your episodes. You're at like 80 episodes or something like that. 
I had uh, if something? I um, oh no my my daily inspirations I'm up to 161 goes live today. Oh holy um, crap! I'm sorry, my my bad. I cut them in half. No, no, no. It's fine because um, you might have been looking on Spotify, and we're just uploading them to Spotify now. But I've I've had them going out on social media now for 160 odd days. I've got 180 episodes recorded already. So nice. <laughs> I looked on Apple on iTunes. Hold on. Yeah, that'll iTunes. be right because I've just started putting them up. So you probably up to episode seventy-five or something on um, Apple. It says it says seventy-one, but I I think they're lying. No, 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 we're <laughs> uploading. No, we are uploading them. So I didn't have them going out on Spotify um, um, through through the the podcast network. And a week ago, I was speaking to my editor, and I went, oh, I think we should do this. He goes, Okay. So he's been slowly taking right. – it's a lot of work. <laughs> 170 yeah, episodes to of upload course. is a lot of work. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's good. Yeah, so Spotify, I'm convinced, is the next main podcast platform. I, I, I've been seeing a lot of people transition over. Spotify is a great platform. I mean, they, they do great work. So. Well, yeah, and I, look, I'm not an Apple person. I don't have an Apple device. So for me, it was like I can't use Apple Podcasts and – do do well with that because I don't use it, but I can use Spotify and that gets me out to every other platform. So that's what I've done. But yeah, so thank nice. you. Yeah, I've got some consistency going, and that's that's been important. That's the that's number one rule. Number one is consistency. After that, you can work on other stuff. But until you get that foundational block, which you definitely have, thank you, Charlie, for having me. I really appreciate it, and uh, it was awesome. Thank you so much. And look, guys, I will see you all next week. I should have a guest. If not, you might just have the talking head again. That's okay. I'm sure you enjoy that as much as I do. <laughs> I'll see you all next week. Thanks, guys. Bye.